My first attendance at this event was last year at the Arvettler. And one of the challenges I willingly signed up for said, do something you've never done before. Well, I don't sing, and you should all be grateful for that. Uh, neither do I juggle or play an instrument, and it was unlikely I'd learn either in the next 30 minutes. So I was then relegated to the final last bastion of bardic skills, poetry. So I sat down with pencil and paper, and 20 minutes later, created my one and perhaps only medieval poem, which I call The Quest of Sir James. And hopefully, if I remember, this is how it goes. Sir James the Knight had set his sight upon a lady fair. Up in her tower window did he spy her in her lair. If only we could meet, he sighed, I know our love would bloom. But I know not who rules this place, how shall I reach her room? But being bold, he strode up forth until the castle gate. If with mailed fist, he pounded, crying, I'm here to seek my mate. The guardsmen there summoned their king, who came down to the door, and looking down upon James, asked, What do you come here for? I come to seek a wife, said James, the one up in your tower. I'd wed her now this very day and take her to my bower. The king scowled down upon the man who stood before him now, and in dark tones he did declare, This I shall not allow. My daughter, she is not for you, you plain and simple man. You'd need to win her by great deeds, and I don't think you can. Now go away, you silly knight, this door you shall not pass. Then signal to his guardsman, who threw James out on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> now rising up and dusting off, he gazed up in the air. Tis more way than one, I quoth James, to reach my lady fair. He shed his helmet, belt, and sword, then stripping off his mail, he strode forth to the cast to the vine clad walls, and there began to scale. A third way up, then happy went towards his desired mate, but then discovered there the vines would not support his weight. Again the ground did greet him hard, again he groaned and rose. That didn't work, so I must find a new way, I suppose. He hurried to a nearby farm, and there a ladder borrowed. If this don't work, James told himself, I shall be greatly sorrowed. He set it firmly to the wall, and glancing one more time upon his quarry far above, he now began to climb. Up and up did he ascend towards she who him besotted, but near the top he found the rungs had been completely rotted. He flailed about with arms and legs, alas, with no salvation, and once again the ground below gave savage ministration. For some time he lay prostrate, stars dancing, in his head. Then suddenly he sat erect. Aha, he loudly said, I think my mind has come upon an answer to this mystery. And if it works, I shall go down the greatest night in history. Thus went he off for three days hence, but then came the result, as slowly down the road he came, pushing a catapult. <laughs> I see from some of your expressions, you are now wondering what could possibly go wrong. <laughs> He set it down upon the green, and aiming it with care, he climbed aboard and sat himself where stones normally share. He pulled a lever, and the arm did launch him across the space. Alas, the range was set too short. The wall greeted his face. <laughs> when consciousness returned, he cried, just one more try I'll need. A few steps closer to the wall, then surely I'll succeed. Now nearer to the castle walls, again he wound it tight. Again he climbed aboard and pulled and set off on his flight. The view he had spectacular as o'er the walls he soared. Then hundred yards beyond he saw the ancient pine tree hoard. <laughs> they swiftly rushed upon him now as if a great green wall. The first twelve branches that he struck did almost break his fall. Now on the forest floor he lay, lights dancing in his eyes while far behind our castle walls did mockingly still rise. <sighs> Bruised and battered, James now knew his hopes for love were sunk. He shrugged but once, then headed home, where he became a monk. <laughs> I'm going to state one disclaimer. 
any resemblance between Sir James and a certain Marley Coyote is not entirely coincidental. 